Hey guys, welcome back to my Pottery at Home series. <laughs> In this video, I want to show you how to make a footed cup, just like this one here. So let's get started. I already explained how I roll out a slab in the plate demonstration so you can have a look and understand how to properly roll out a slab. Okay, so I have my slab prepared already. Now I'm going to cut out these rectangles. So here I have the body of my first cylinder cut out. So I would just set that aside and cut out the length of the foot. And here is my foot. So I actually have way too much clay here. So what I'm going to do is cut off just enough for the base of the cup. I'm going to keep that. And then the rest, I'm going to set on a board and use for something else. These extra bits, um, I could hang on to if I think I might need them. Like for example, I could decide to add a handle, something like that with this extra piece. But for now, I think I am not going to use that actually. So I'm going to let them dry out and add them to my reclaim pile. Okay, so now we need to make this round piece into a cylinder so it's very simple all you want to do is stick it up on its end but in order to connect these two sides we don't want to just stick them up against each other like that that's not a very secure uh, way to attach first thing i'm going to cut at an angle at about a 45 degree angle on each end and I'm gonna do that with the other end. And the reason I'm doing that is because when I do that, I can actually overlap the two ends so that it's a lot more um, secure of a bond between these two that I will make. So when you're doing this, make sure that you cut one and then you flip it over to cut the other one. If you don't do that, you're going to have the two sharp sides uh, hitting each other instead of them overlapping. Okay, the second thing I'm going to do is slipping and scoring. If you see my slipping and scoring video, you already know how to do this. So scoring, slipping. Okay, so I will lay the two ends just on top of each other like that. And I'm going to apply gentle but firm pressure here. So what I want to see is the slip squeezing out from where it's stuck on here. I'm not worried right now about how it looks. I'm worried about making sure it's a strong attachment. One thing that you can do is set it on its side and sort of um, try and slide them past each other and that will also help the two sides to grab onto each other but if they're not sliding that means they're already stuck so that's great so now it's important to let that soak in a little bit and dry out so I'm going to actually set that aside and work on my foot so I do the exact same thing Okay, so now it's dried out a little bit and I can spend some time cleaning up these connections here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the side of my thumb to smooth it over into the other piece. So I'm just smoothing out and removing this extra slip. Definitely you want to take some time focusing on the inside as well, especially if you want to use this cup later to drink out of, you don't want to have any ridges that will catch dirt and be difficult to clean out. 
So you can kind of disguise that connection as best as you can. Since this is hand building, you never really have it perfect. That's just fine. So I would just set this aside now and do the other one, the foot. There you go. Okay, now we have the two sides, but one part is missing and that is the bottom. So I'm going to use my extra piece here and I will start by attaching the walls of the pot to the bottom. So now I'm gonna be looking down through the top to make sure that my bottom or the bottom of this is actually the shape that I want. So I'm just making sure that this inner part on the bottom is actually round because we're gonna attach these two pieces now and so we're not gonna be able to move them later. So at this point you don't need to go for a perfect cylinder if you don't want. You can make it an oval or you can make it a square. Okay, so to attach them now, first is I'm going to just draw where they are connected. So I'm just gonna use the side of my fork. You can use a needle or a pencil, whatever you got laying around. Now I can pick it up, flip it over, and you can see where my cylinder is supposed to be attached. And the reason I flipped it over is because now I'm going to attach this side to this side. So I need this side up so I can score it. And then I'll flip it back over to reattach it. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit of extra off here, but I do not want to cut off around this circle yet. That's actually the last step that we do. You want at least a half centimeter of space around your circle. So now I'm just going to use my fork again, and I'm gonna score where the piece is attaching. So since I drew my line on the outside, I need to score just on the inside of that line. It's okay if you go a little off or make too many extra lines, that's fine. We're just gonna clean that up later. So something like that is fine. And then I will score this part. Okay, there we go. Now we'll just add a little slip. So now I flip it back over, line it up. I'm gonna look down through here again to make sure it's the right shape. And now we wanna push these two sides together. So as I'm pushing down, I'm actually going to twist it a little bit so that it will grab on. And once you're twisting it and it doesn't move anymore, that means it's attached. So once again, I'm gonna set this aside and uh, let it soak in a little bit before we cut off the bottom and clean it up. So this is a great uh, example of why in pottery we do things in batches because there is always a bit of wait time in between. So while that is sitting aside, um, it would be very clever to have make two of these pieces at once or to have a different piece that you're working on in the meantime because drying is such an important part of working with ceramics that we don't usually just make one piece at a time. Almost every professional ceramicist is working in batches. Okay, so a bit of time has passed and now uh, the slip has uh, settled in a little bit and hardened. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and clean this up and take off the extra clay. So the way I'm going to do this is I'll hold the knife up straight at a 90 degree angle and I'm just going to cut in right along. I'm just going to follow that line straight down and cut all the way around. I always like to turn the pot and not my knife hand so I can always hold it at a comfortable angle and get the cut that I want. So I'm just trying to get as close to the wall of the cup as possible without cutting into the wall. Okay, now we can spend some time smoothing this in. I will just use my finger for this and I'm gonna start from the bottom and pull that up into the wall of the pot to smooth that in. So I kind of want this line to just disappear here. There we go, nice and smooth. Now I will take a look on the inside and make sure that's nice and smooth. Um, I can't really fit my finger down in there so comfortably, so I will find something that fits. 
Normally we would use a wooden tool for this at the pottery studio, but um, just find something that fits. I think the back of this knife will work. Maybe uh, the back of your fork or your paintbrush. And I'm just going to use it to pick up the extra slip and smooth that all out. I want the inside to be as smooth as possible so that we don't have any ridges. The glaze will cover some imperfections and some bumps, but the smoother the base of the uh, piece is, the better. Okay, so that's done. But it's all smoothed out. All that's left is for me to attach the ring foot. So now you can see how it fits here and how my proportions are. Definitely a lot taller than this, but otherwise quite similar. I'm going to attach the ring foot just like I did the walls. So I'm going to place it, look down from the top to make sure it's even. Flip this over, see where I've got my line. And I'm going to use my fork to score inside the line. Something like that is pretty good, yeah? Okay, now I'll score the foot ring. Adding the slip, place, check to make sure it's where you want it, and then apply even light pressure down and turn it like this. And there we've got it. So again, I'm going to let this sit for a little bit to uh, dry out before I go back in and clean up uh, any of the scratches or the extra slip that's sticking out. Okay, so this has been drying now for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna go back in with my finger or with a tool that fits well, and I'm going to smooth out the extra slip. Now it's just about finishing it up to the point that you're happy with it. So small things like fingerprints will not show up underneath the glaze, but larger things like fingernail cuts, texture from the bending of the clay, that will show up. Okay, so I have my finished piece now. I just need to sign it and decide which color glaze I want on it. Um, with pieces like this, I actually prefer to sign on the edge here, so right on the bottom of the foot. And the reason for that is that, that if I sign down here, it's actually going to get covered by the glaze. So I want my signature visible. And especially you guys who are dropping off clay to be fired at our studio, it's important that we can see who made what so that we don't mix up people's pieces Okay, so now I just need to let this dry out. Once again, I always let pieces dry out upside down if I can, and that is so that all of the sides of the clay can dry evenly. Now, even drying is the most important part of preventing cracking. So I just always turn my pieces upside down as soon as I can, just so that they can dry evenly and I have a much higher rate of success. So that is it for the footed slab cup. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Um, this is actually the last video that I had planned from the beginning. So I wanna keep doing these videos for you, but I need to know what you guys want to see. So please write down in the comments below what else you want to see from me. Um, I'm very happy to show you any sort of technique that I can do in my home. Um, so please just let me know what you're interested in learning and uh, I will do my best to accommodate. So see you guys in the next video. I'm gonna edit it in somewhere. <laughs>